We're here today to tell you about some new interconnects from AudioQuest. But it's not just we've got some new cables. We want to explain the technology behind them and something which has taken us 42 years since the company was founded to get to this point where we've got what we believe to be the very best cables we've ever made. We've always designed everything ourselves. We control the process ourselves. We make everything ourselves. And that allows us to be very, very consistent. So that means if you started with our tower interconnect at 40 US dollars, and you listen to every cable going through the line, all the way up to Dragon at 12,000 US dollars, you wouldn't find the sound change completely from one cable to another. It would just become more open, clearer, more detailed, more transparent. And that honors our most important philosophy, which is to do no harm. So where we are today is to talk to you about new range of interconnects. And we start off with our Black Beauty interconnect here. Do you want to do pricing in Hong Kong dollars? Should I talk US dollars? Price of retail is around uh, 12,000. Black Beauty, one liter. So Black Beauty XLR cable and RCA cable. Um, one meter XLR is 1,000 US dollars. What we have with these cables, though, is an enormous improvement on what we were running before. And so in a bit, we're going to actually compare some cables for you. We're going to play you our Water XLR cable, which is a product we launched in 2014, our Element series. We had Water, Earth, Wind and Fire. So Water is the same price as Black Beauty. So what have we changed? What's new? Because we're still maintaining our same philosophies. We're still using our best quality copper for plugs. We're covered with a thick layer of silver. We're still using solid core conductors inside. We're still using the same types of shielding. So what's changed? We didn't just make a new range just so we could sell some things with new names. We completely redesigned the way the cable works. And we do that with a technology we, dev we devised in 2017 for some power cables. And that's called zero characteristic impedance. So to explain our zero tech, every cable, whether it's a speaker cable, uh, an interconnect, a power cable, every cable has a series impedance. And the series impedance is governed by the laws of physics, which is the further we send an electrical signal down our cable, we will lose signal strength. There's natural resistance inside the wire. We can't overcome that. The only way to overcome that is just to use optical cables everywhere, as the optical offers no resistance. So that's series impedance. Another level of impedance is called characteristic impedance. And the characteristic impedance is the extent to which the conductor, the metal used, obstructs or holds back the signal as it travels down the cable. So it's not about series impedance, it's about how much our conductor is going to interfere with our signal and obstruct it and stop the full potential and power getting through. Now the characteristic impedance of a cable can be measured, which is good. Uh, the characteristic impedance is the differential between the positive and the negative on a speaker cable or the live and the neutral on a power cable. And that's multiplied by the impedance of the dielectric, the insulation around the conductors. So from that, we get a value which is characteristic impedance. So we have very easy uh, to implement technology when you think about it. We have a design which eliminates characteristic impedance. So in this cable, for example, the, this is an XLR cable. There's three parts for an XLR cable. There's positive, inverted positive, and the negative. Some people call it positive, ground, and negative. The positive and the inverted positive are electrostatically isolated from each other which means there is no measurable differential between them. So multiplied by the impedance of the dielectric doesn't matter because zero multiplied by anything is zero. Zero, thank you. I like this man. He's good at maths. He's better, better than Patrick. I don't think the cable business is for you. You need to be good at maths. You have to keep selling AudioQuest. 
So this was something we devised for a range of power cables back in 2017. And we're running all those power cables on the system here. On the back here, we've got our Dragon power cables, our Firebird power cables. Then in 2018, we launched a range of speaker cables. And starting from our Robin Hood, and then William Tell cables, then our Thunderbird, and on here, our Firebird and Dragon cables, we use that same zero characteristic impedance. And now we've launched a range of interconnects using the same technology. So if the full signal pass, so between the source and the amplifier, then the amplifier and the speakers and the power going into them, if everything benefits from zero tech, the benefits are far greater because everything is completely opened up. So it's better than just changing a couple of cables. We could transform the entire system. Now, they're very stiff cables. And there's a reason for that, because we've got inside there two complete sets of thick electrostatic shielding and then graphene based shielding around, thank you, around the outside of the conductors. And that makes it a lot thicker, a lot stiffer than our old cables, but it gives us an enormous improvement in performance. So we have our electrostatic isolation. We also have what we call our global carbon shielding, which is, um, well, rather than just use carbon, which we've used in the past to uh, wrap around the cable and to draw noise away from it, we now use graphene. And graphene is a marvellous material. It's incredibly strong, very conductive, and very, very thin. It's the only material in the world that can be laid down in layers one atom thick. It makes it very expensive. Gram for gram, graphene is more expensive than cocaine. Not that I expect anyone to have a reference point there, but it does mean that in a small amount of space, we can do an extreme level of shielding to prevent external noise interfering with the cables. Now, Black Beauty replaces our water cable. And there's a significant difference in how it's made because we have different versions for RCA and for XLR. And it's not just the plug that's different. So if we wired an XLR cable, then the positive and the inverted positive will be the thin conductors. The negative will be the thick conductor. We always design our cables to be more efficient for the negative the return path, so we can take the signal out more efficiently it goes in. We always want to reduce the noise floor inside the equipment. This is true on power cables, and it's true on speaker cables. On speaker cables, we use insulation or dielectric around the negative conductors, which is conductive itself. So we load the insulation with carbon. On the interconnects, we change the size of the conductors. The negative conductor is always larger. So if we made an RCA cable, we join together the two smaller conductors, that would then be the negative, and the single conductor would be the positive. However, we did find that for RCA, that really meant we have too much metal in the cable. It was actually slightly detrimental to performance. It also meant that people buying an RCA cable were spending really more than they needed to. It was kind of, they were subsidizing the XLR customers. So with the new design of these cables, there's different prices for RCA and for XLR because they're different constructions inside. RCA now only has two conductors, XLR has three conductors. So we have to have twice as much inventory, but that's fine, because we sell three times as much of these, so it's fun. After Black Beauty, the next step is Pegasus. There's one obvious difference. The Black Beauty cable does not use our, our DBS system, this little battery pack. On Pegasus, we do use DBS. Does anyone know what this thing does? So DBS is a really interesting little design, which we can almost thank the Russians for this, because this was a product of Cold War technology. Our owner, Bill, one of his friends is called Richard Vandersteen, and he runs an American company called Vandersteen Loudspeakers. And years and years ago, Back in the 1950s, 1960s, he was a sonar operator on an American submarine. And so with the sonar, they had to sit there and listen and try and hear other submarines far away. They're basically using radio waves to spy on, or sound waves to spy on people. And the sonar operators found if they biased the sonar array, if they ran a constant current through it, it dropped the noise floor and they could hear things further away. And when you're trying to track a Russian submarine, 
full of nuclear missiles that might be ready to blow up your, your, your country, you really want to be able to hear where they are and track them down. So that was a really good concept they came up with. And years later, when he was designing loudspeakers, he thought, what would happen if I biased the crossover in a speaker? And so if you look at van der Steen speakers, if you ever get a chance, you'll see that there's actually normally a battery pack or something electronic hooked up to the crossover array, and it runs a constant current through it, and it drops the noise floor. And so, because Bill and Richard are friends, we started using this idea for cables. And the DBS system runs a constant current. It biases the dielectric, the insulation around the conductors. Because insulation around our conductors is, it could be polythene, it could be foam polythene, it could be Teflon, it can still conduct some electricity. And what that means is, when we send our electrical signal, whether it's our power signal or our very weak RCA signal or our speaker cable signal, when we send that down our metal conductors, the insulation around those conductors is always absorbing a little bit of that charge. And then finally it becomes saturated. A lot of people talk about running cables in. You must play your cable for 30 hours before it sounds good. All you're doing is charging up the dielectric, the insulation. Once that insulation is saturated, it stops interfering with your signal, with your signal path. However, the moment you stop playing music, it starts to discharge back into the conductor. So our insulation is always either taking something away or it's adding in something that we don't want. So the DBS system runs a constant high voltage, 72 volts, but low current charge just through the insulation around the conductors. Now this DBS pack, is different to the ones we made before, this has two little connections on it. Because we have, in here, the positive and the inverted positive are electrostatically isolated. So each one needs its own separate DBS feed. And these each connect to an anode and a cathode that run alongside that positive and that inverted positive. So we run a constant charge just through the insulation around the conductors. And the difference that mean, makes is it drops the noise floor. We end up with a more open sound stage, a more three-dimensional sound. We can hear the details more clearly. It's like the difference between a full, a full range speaker and a bi-wireable speaker. It's separating everything out. So Pegasus is made of exactly the same quality copper as Black Beauty. It's got the same plugs. And this new design of plug is designed as an RF draining plug. This drains radio frequency noise away from the point of contact and strips it out of the cable. Pegasus also has our DBS system here. And the final advantage of Pegasus, it has what we call air tubes. And you'll find some illustrations of this inside those little books. Because the insulation is always going to interfere with our signal, if that's our conductor, if the insulation is tight around it, that dielectric, that insulation, is always touching our conductor. So even using DBS is going to interfere with the signal slightly. When we use an air tube, we make the insulation oversized so that then only a part of the conductor is ever touching the insulation. And when you have a cable with air tubes, you can often tap it and hear the conductor moving around freely inside. So Pegasus uses our air tube system. And our owner Bill describes designing cables, it's like climbing a mountain. Every time you think you've got to the top, you get past a rock and you see that actually the peak's a bit further off in the distance. So I could go back to the cables we made, Michael remember these, like the, oh, the, 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 the precious stone series, uh, Jade and Amethyst and Topaz that we made back in the 1990s. And then the early river series we did with Colorado and Columbia and Niagara and Sky. Then the element series, water, earth, wind and fire, and now the horses series. Each time we make a cable and it's the best we can do, but then as the years go by, we learn something more and we learn how to improve it. Some companies deliberately hold back their technologies so they have a way to improve their product in a few years' time. We never do that. As soon as we know how to do something better, we do it, we make it. Sometimes we throw away huge amounts of inventory of components or parts because our owner will not allow us to keep making a cable of any type if he knows we can easily make it better. 
And we often do running improvements to cables. Uh, there's a lot of things where we've changed them over the years. So our, our Red River, our entry level XLR cable has had two levels of improvement since we launched it eight years ago, 10 years ago, because we knew we could make it sound better without having to change the design of it too much. We could give people more for their money.